There's another dirty way to get in the masters. Oh my god, you actually can. That's disgusting. Oh. Hey, I'm Super Senpai, and I finally made the masters. Like, oh my god, it was a. It took me about three months to get there, and unfortunately, there was like no online guy that actually helped me get to masters. No matter how well you play or how poor you play, it always ends up being Zapdos. After the October nerf in 2021, it made things more fair. But if you got Zapdos, you won 70% of the time. Now, the way I got to masters is a very, very unethical way, and here's why all the current guys out there don't really help with the reality of how the game is. Number one. Your teammates that you get matched up in solo queue are masters who have nothing to lose. See, if your teammate has anything but an eject button, you have a 30% chance to win. You can tell they're experimenting. And the other spectrum is if they forfeit the first 5 minutes of the game, you you know they don't care about the game. Half the time, they just chill up base and do nothing, so f*** them. Number 2. Your teammates don't help. If your teammate has a potion, there's a 20% chance they're gonna win. If your teammates are leaving you to fight Drena alone, you have a 10% chance to win. If your team uses their Unite one minute before Zapdos comes out, you have a 2% chance to win. Number 3. You're not focusing on scoring. So the reality is everyone has to play a role. Tank, attack, support, but everyone needs to score. Cause this helps build momentum. And also if you don't score, someone else has to carry your weight. Do you really trust that potion guard champ to carry your weight? I don't think so. Add a score shield and try scoring once in a while. It makes a huge difference at the end. Number four, you are going in teams of five. So 5v5s usually face only five. Solo queue usually faces teams with teams of three or teams of two. So it's a lot easier to communicate with players when you play 5v5, but you're going to be facing a lot more coordinated people and it's going to be more of a Deadlock skill battle, and honestly, luck at the end who gets Zapdos. So, rather than that, try to take advantage and find easier people by playing in smaller teams. I will recommend if you do a three man team, one top, one middle, one bottom, just because you know what's happening throughout the whole game. And number five, the most important rule in Pokemon Unite you die less, you win more. If you aren't able to score, go jungle. Let them score. It's not a big deal if they destroy a tower or two. You can always come back when you're a higher level than them. If you die, you give them balls and experience and a free shot at your net. That's worse. So don't defend your towers. Defend your balls. Now we know your problems, you can do the courageous way. Find the perfect four teammates and have them have the perfect game every game. And that's never happened to me. <laughs> when I get a team of five, it's either a 50% chance we win or a 90% chance I'm going on a losing streak after that first loss. So I will tell you how to get to Masters the dirty way. But first, I'm going to talk about the basics because if you don't know the basics, then doing the dirty way is not even going to help you at all. Number one, the held items. Every item can work based on your playstyle. Don't think which one's better than the other, they're all about the same. Except for leftovers, AO's cookie, and experience share. They do not work in ranked. I tried. It does not work. But as long as level 20 with the other items, it can be played in ranked. It just depends on your comfort level. Most recommended ends up just being buddy barrier and focus ban. Uh, but again, the more comfortable your playstyle is, like if you want to score more, or if you want to defend more, or different ways you want to play, all of the items are equally fine for you. Number two, Pokemon. There are no bad Pokemon in the game, but if you see a Charizard or a Garchomp, you're gonna have a fun ranked game. All rounders, except for Lucario, who just got nerfed, feels like they're all around pieces of You know, if you want to fix the all rounders, give them better AOE attacks. That's all I can say. And status ailments, status ailments are key because Garchomp does not have a status ailment that's strong enough. Now, when you pick your Pokemon teams, they should be the following order. Two top, one middle, two bottom. For top, you got attacker and a defender. Middle, you got jungler. And bottom, you have attack or defender or support. The reason why I say it this way is because the defender helps you protect your base and the attacker allows you to get aggressive. This is the most equal way for you to feel balanced. And the jungler can push the flow up or down. The faster you can break down the bottom, the easier it is you have for the game. So that's why I recommend tank and support at the bottom with an attacker to help push even further because the support can heal the attacker to be more aggro. So there is also another strategy you guys can use in the formation. It's actually one top, one middle, three bottom. 
The reason for this is because the top will be your tank and tank gets the most XP by themselves and then they can defend themselves. While the three bomb are two attackers and the support or the defender, they can push their way on the bomb to easily get through the tower first. So as soon as you destroy the bomb tower, they have no opportunity to get the turtle of the bomb and on the top you can snipe roll them. And the jungle has the ability to either help out the top tank or help out the blood the bomb. And that's actually one of the best strategies out there in the game right now. Unless the opponent does it too, then you're you're a stalemate. Number three, strategy. You level up fast, try to get Pokemon on your opponent's side. If you can't, just run away, go back to your base. If you can score, you score. If you can't, defend. If you can't defend, just run away. Let them score in tower. Why? It does not matter at all who gets the first tower or not. It just helps with the game flow. But if you let them score your tower, but they don't kill you, you're about even because you can go out jungle, level up, and you get more experience for killing Pokemon than scoring gold. Let's talk about bees. Bees are so important in this game. They're like mini dreadnoughts in terms of XP. If you get them all, you level up a little bit faster than your opponent right off the bat. And always remember, 850. As soon as 850 hits, you go for those bees and you get the advantage. That is the goal for you in Pokemon Unite. When it comes to Dreadnought Rotom, the original strategy is everyone goes to Turtle. But you don't need that anymore. And think about it logically, that makes no sense. Why put your, all your eggs in one basket? So the logic here is the totem pole. Every single Pokemon that attacks gets linked together. Whoever gets the last hit gets the bonus. You're just betting on who's going to hit last. So it's all luck at the end of the day. It's not like, oh, strategy, I'm going to get this attack, this attack. I'm gonna do Fluffy Tail and then we're gonna hit it. No, if you do Fluffy Tail, you're just speeding up the process where the opponent gets sniped even earlier. The strategy should actually be four bottom, one top. The one person on top could be a tank, could be a speedster. Your goal is to, as soon as Turtle comes out, you grind the whole area at top, so you level up as fast as you can, then you go after Rolem yourself. While everyone else the bottom is trying to contest against Dreadnought, the top person can also donate at the same time too to get rid of the tower faster. If you lose Turtle, you have Rolem now. And if you don't get Rotom either, you level up enough for you to justify saying, hey, I went up two levels, I got my ulti, I can start fighting people off too. You need to think of the long game. Not getting Turtle, not getting Rotom does not lose you the game. Go jungle, you have an open field to jungle. If your opponent wants to score, try to push them off. If you can, just leave them. Again, the game doesn't end until Zapdos. And then you repeat this cycle, jungle, jungle, team fight, team fight, jungle, jungle, until Zapdos comes out. Also, quick note, remember to always look at your mini-map, because if you see your mini-map and some of the Pokemon are disappearing, that means it's an opportunity for you to know that your pen is there. But if the Pokemon don't disappear, it's an opportunity for you to go there to go score. Number four, dealing with Zapdos. Now, it is a lot better ever since the nerf, and I know in the future videos, this might be a different boss Pokemon, which is totally fine. But it is so much easier to deal with, because even if you lose Zapdos, you can counter score. And if you are ahead already, you should actually still win at the end there, which is great. But if you want to win the Zapdos fight, the number one rule is to stay next to each other as a team. The reason why is because if your opponents are picking you off as a team, then someone who uses Buddy Barrier does not protect you because you're not close to them. So what is the point? Be close together, and then your teammates are going to use your moves together, your ultis together, the heals together. You guys can take down anyone on the team. And the moment you start picking off your opponents, if two of your opponents are dead, you have the advantage of a 5v3. And that's how you win the Zapdos fight, is to pick off your opponent. I don't care when people say, defend Zapdos, that never ever works for me. And the reason why it doesn't work is because of the fact the opponents respawn, come back, they have a new ulti because they level up a bit further. For some reason they get their ultis back, or maybe they didn't use the ultis. But then they destroy us because we have no more health against uh, other things, or they can snipe Zapdos and still win at the end. I don't like people who say defend Zapdos without saying the obvious. If you kill someone on your opponent team, and you have half health, Go back to base and heal, and then you can defend again. But I find it much more achievable if I were to destroy Zapdos, because when your opponents are respawning for about 10 seconds, and your team's full ready to go, you should probably do it, because if you aren't going to kill Zapdos in 10 seconds, your team was never meant to win in the first place. Also, very important rule for you players out there. Save your Unite for the 3 minute f mark, so you can use it against Zapdos or your opponents. Do not die at the 2.30 mark. Because if you die at the 2.30 mark and you're winning, you're going to come back when Zapdos is getting killed by your opponent. So, yeah. If you lose Zapdos, just counter score. Everyone's too busy trying to score to kill you off. So, you know, either kill them or run and score. This works better now after the nerf. So, you know, 2022 things can be different. Now, number five. This is a very generic rule for anyone who plays games. If you lose, just take a breather. My girlfriend said this is our couple game. This is not a couple game. This is actually a very stressful exercise between our relationship. Always assume you can do better, but don't assume you aren't good. 
you probably are good, it's just luck wasn't on your side, you got the wrong teammates, or... In all honesty, I think it's just luck on your side. If you lose after you lose the game, it's that kind of vibe. Now, if you lose four in a row, just call it a night and rest. Next day, you might go on the streak. Now we're done with the basics, let's get to the dirty stuff of how to get to the masters. Now, some of you will call me a scrub, and you know what? I'm a master scrub, so f you. Let's get this started. Number one, teams of three. Not one, not two, but three. Like I said above, Three's the high chance of having miscommunications for your opponents. And if you're confident with your team, you can control the field pretty well. If you have three people, you can control top, middle, bottom. You control two people at bottom, one person middle. You control one top, two bottom. It doesn't matter as long as you have control with three people. It doesn't matter what the other two people play. You're the majority of the team. Teams of five, no thank you. That's only for pros. I am not. I am a master. Teams of three are important because in solo queue, you still match up with teams of two and threes. So might as well maximize your odds of having good players that you can communicate with or not communicate with, just people you can trust versus people who are all random people you don't know and they give up easy. It happens, especially you masters out there. Stop forfeiting the game in five minute mark. Number two, if you lose three or more times, just go for the free win. I guess it's conditional now because the boss got harder. So like, you gotta be good jungling with bots or else like the boss won't carry you. So, you know, if you lose against a bot game, you know you're not a good jungler. So get freshening up on jungling. So my gut says the matchmaking is based on your lose streak or your win streak. So if you are winning streaks, you face against people with winning streaks. And if you're losing streak, you face people with losing streaks. And if there's no one that has a losing streak like you, you get matched up with a bot game. That's what I'm thinking is happening in this. Also in Ultra, if you have around 360 performance points and zero diamonds, you're better off forfeiting your next match because uh, you can lose three more times and force a free bot game. I've seen a lot of Ultra players actually forfeit games just so they can force that and then get the winning streak going versus, you know, if they were to win and they get the extra diamond, then they lose all the shares they're building up before. So if you get 400 performance points, for example, and you get extra diamond, no insurance. And yeah, people throw the games because they want the insurance versus, you know, the win, then loss, and then if you lose again, you're out. Number three, play when no one else plays. This is the main way I got into Masters. I was stressing out one night and I'm like, look, I'm better player than I think I am. I have four game win streak and then I lost. And I can't, like, I, I just, I just want to get into Masters. So I woke up at uh, 2 a.m. Yeah, Eastern Standard Time. And I played to 4 a.m. And I went on a seven game win streak. And I got into Masters. 12 a.m. EST to 4 a.m. EST. All the Europeans and all the people in Asia are at school or at work and I'm supposed to be sleeping because I've worked the next day. That's how you take advantage of those sleepy people who don't have too many friends. That's your time to shine. And actually, I've been matched up with people in the veteran and expert class as an ultra because there's not enough people to play so they throw anyone on you. So it's so much easier to play this way. Even my roommate comes up to me and like, did you just beat a bunch of kids at 2am to prove you're good at a kid's game? Yes. That's how you get into Masters a lot easier. Play at times no one else plays and you get matched up with easier people. And if you play with a friend, you have a much better time against them. Number four, this is disgusting. Smurf accounts. I'm not proud of this one. And this is how I got my girlfriend into Masters. <laughs> experts cannot play against Masters and Ultras can play with Experts. So when the Ultra and the Expert teamed up, they cannot face a Masters normally in matchmaking circumstance. If you have the Expert as your host, and they are a skillful player, they will help you match up with only Ultras and Veterans, so you have an easier time, and you won't match up with Masters who are either too good and kick your ass, or very they give up very easily, who are always on your team. And that always happens to me in this situation. So then if you avoid those two, you're gonna have a much easier time matching up with people. You are gonna be matched up with people who give a damn on your team. So the question is, how do I get a Smurf account? You either use your mobile device or you use another Switch account that your friends have laying around. Get the right items to level 30 and then level up into Expert and Ranked, which should be easy. It should take you maybe a day or two. And then you have your friend that's skillful enough to play, play for you while you get an Ultra and you try to get to, you know, Master. The other option is to find an Expert in the Pokemon Unite community and they'll join you and they'll help rank you up. When the Expert gets to Veteran, then you gotta drop them because the Smurf thing doesn't work anymore. So. So how much more do you win with a Smurf account as a teammate? I'll probably say 20% more. Why not more than 20%? It's because matchmaking the game is still broken. If there's not enough players, they will still match you up with Masters even though logically you can't. 
So at the end day, Ten says, fix your stupid matchmaking, because it's stupid. Now, how do you keep a Smurf account a Smurf account? This is going to be scummy, and I've seen people do it, and I've done it by accident. You can lose matches on purpose in solo queue as an expert. There's good news about experts in losing streaks. And when the expert loses about two or three games, the game will force you into a bot game. And every game you lose, you always keep saying the bot game until you win. But the good news of this is you're not hurting other people out there who are trying to rank up. You're just losing yourself by yourself against bots. But some of the games you probably will be throwing for real people if you're trying to affect the Smurf account. Again, this is unethical. I don't like this, but if, if Tencent wants to fix this, then make sure there's bigger, bigger punishments for people who forfeit earlier. Now, how do you tell it's a bot game? If the screen looks like this, you know you're in the bot game. Your computer's trying to wait for you to make a selection, and then after you select, they'll pick for you. I actually had to forfeit a bot game because we were winning. I was actually shocked about that. Now you're all thinking, man, that is so scummy. You're using a Smurf account. You're going at like 2 a.m. to play people. You're not even a real Masters player. You're just finding a way to find loopholes to become a Masters. Yes, this video is called The Dirty Guide to Getting into Masters for Pokemon Unite. This is the dirty guide. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just telling you this is how you can get there. I'm not proud of it. But you know what? There's another dirty way to get into Masters. You can buy your account on eBay. Oh my god, you actually can. That's f***ing disgusting. Ugh. Anyways, I am not proud of these tips. But I'm saying, if you really want to get into Masters late in the season, this guy should help. Early season, probably not because no one knows what the ranks are. And Smurf in your account, you may face actually really good people. But yes, this guy will help you. You will face weaker people. You will find loopholes. You will lose games on purpose. Congratulations, you have made it to Masters in Pokemon Unite. Does that mean you're the best player? Hell no. That's why it doesn't matter if you're a veteran, ultra, even expert. Look, if you know the basics of the game, you can win or lose, it's all about luck. So just enjoy the game. Even if you don't make it to Masters, who gives a shit? You know what does matter? Not losing the person with a potion. If you do, GG, you are a good player. Now, if Tencent makes this video obsolete by changing everything I said, the dirty way to get a Masters, thank you Tencent, that's what we're asking for. Masters face Masters, don't let them face people who are trying to rank up. Have heavier punishments for people who AFK. Except, you know, the eBay thing, I, I know you can't stop though. I have a friend that tried to buy a MapleStory account just so she could play with us. Weirdos are going to be weirdos. That's all they are. Thank you for watching the Dirty Guide to Pokemon Unite Masters. I am finally a master so I can enjoy the new Pokemon Diamond Pro game which comes out in the next month and I'll be taking the day off to stream it all night long. So, one of my favorite highlights from the, my Pokemon Unite Masters run. I love you Blastoise. I love you Talonflame. I love you Mr. Mime. I love you Blissey and LD even though you're the exact same Pokemon in my eyes. I'm disappointed in you Garchomp. I hate you Pikachu. And Grammar, I'm actually okay with you now.